a second try and uh, welcome Nick to uh, the podcast and I like really appreciate you taking out a time today because I have been like really looking at your LinkedIn and you've been like interviewing stuff and like going out to meet people and uh, so like really appreciate you coming out here. So uh, people who don't know Nick, uh, you can give a brief introduction about like just two or three lines about who you are and what are you doing right now? For sure. Um, thanks for having me, by the way. Um, so my name's Nick. Um, previously, I interned or worked at Microsoft, Google, and Facebook, as well as a small geospatial data startup called SafeGraph. Uh, most recently, I had been sharing a lot of tips on how to ace data science interviews and how to break into the field. Um, I published a best-selling book, Ace the Data Science Interview. Yeah, which I, I do have recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I know you've been reading it, and we'll talk about that later. Um, and yeah, I've just been a career coach to people, putting out videos and tips on LinkedIn and Instagram and YouTube uh, about data science interviews and breaking into this field. Got it, got it. And like, uh, let, let's just start about your journey. Like you uh, worked at Microsoft also. So like, what are your like general tips of people applying to Microsoft? Because I also apply to that. So is there some resume tips for uh, like people who are applying to that companies, especially for Fang and big companies? Yeah, I think a lot of the tips honestly apply to any size company, whether it's Fang or startups. Um, I just noticed so many people have such generic information on their resumes, irrelevant information that bears no meaning to yeah. what a hiring manager in data science or software or machine learning cares about. I'll give you an example. People love to list their languages. No, not programming languages, mm, but I mean yeah. four languages. And you're applying for a Microsoft internship in the US. How does it help that you know Telugu or Spanish or French or Arab? Yeah. I mean, that, that bears no meaning. Now, the thing is, it in traditional advice would say, oh yeah, that looks good. You're multilingual. But when you put irrelevant details like, oh, I volunteered 200 hours to feed needy kids. Again, that looks great, but that just distracts from why Microsoft is even trying to hire you. It's it's not, they're not trying to hire you to feed needy kids. So that's where it's like, you got to make sure that you're listing your relevant projects, your relevant work experience, your relevant courses, and anything that's irrelevant, you cut it out so that the signal can really shine and it doesn't get drowned out by noise. Too many people drown out their accomplishments with noise about their high school this, their college this, their yeah. involvement, their volunteer, all kinds of good stuff that's good to do as a human, but doesn't really mean much for the job hunt. So I think that's one of the big tips for resumes. Um, another source of really neutral information on the net resume is the objective right at top. Oh, I'm a hardworking, dedicated, yeah. <laughs> creative problem solver. Okay, these are all vague words that Rijul, you can say, I can say, like any one of us can say, and who's to, you know, question that. So it doesn't help. And I hate that people lead their resume. They start with this kind of junk, right? Like, you know, if you're gonna have junk, put it at the end. The first thing I'm reading is these vague, vague sentences about how you're a motivated, passionate techie. Uh, doesn't do shit for me. You know what I mean? Everyone yeah. applying to Microsoft and Google is that way. So I think that's my big tip for resumes. Got it. Got it. I like when did when did you recognize that? Hey, this is the right time for me to like leave Microsoft and do separate thing or like go into a different field, a different company. So is there was there a calling factor there? Uh, sorry, can you ask the question again? I, I didn't quite understand. Uh, like when you left Microsoft for another company, like you... Uh... Internships. Yeah, so these are yeah, internships. Yeah. It was just a summer. Um, but what I really enjoyed my time at Microsoft, but I wanted to see other things. So when I got to intern at Google's Nest Labs, that's their IoT unit that makes like smart thermostats, smart webcams, yeah. um, and a few other smart home products. Um, it was my view, my way of seeing IoT. Because back in 2016, Internet of Things was really hot, sensors was hot, it, you know, and Google's Nest Labs was a smaller company. So that kind of was what motivated me to try out something. And then again, Facebook was social media, and I was really interested in growth engineering at that moment. Um, growth engineering is about using data to help build better products that are more sticky. So it's kind of this mix of psychology, marketing, software engineering, and data. So it was this really interdisciplinary field. That's kind of what brought me to Facebook. And then again, once I'd worked at a big company like Facebook as a new grad, I was like, let me change things up and work yeah. at a small company called SafeGraph, which had only 18 people at it when I joined, you know? So that was very different size than 
Google's Nest Labs, which had a thousand people, and Microsoft, yeah. which was yeah. that you know hundred thousand people. So 